Thank you so much for being here with us today, Mr. Rusbe Barucha. Thank you, Russell. Now, you're a well-known personality and figure. You've done so much with your life. You're an author. You've uh, made movies. You're a poet. You've I even heard your song the other day. Um, did you ever imagine or think when you were much younger, or probably even my age, that you would be where you are today? See, I'll tell you what. Uh, I was very clear from a very early age that I wanted to spend my life in art. I was very clear. Uh, storytelling came naturally from a young age, and I remember in my boarding school, we had to go to sleep very early, and I always suffered from sleep. And there were two, three other idiots like me. And I remember even when I was seven and eight, sitting down and telling them stories. Okay, uh, I was in drama, in theatre, and uh, I've learnt a little bit of Indian classical music on sitar and mandolin. So I was very clear that art is. I felt real in art. I didn't feel real in life, and. Uh, Life, as per se, did not light my bulb, and art became my anchor, something to clutch on to keep my head above water where life was concerned. And uh, my first book, uh, Last Marathon, came out after ten years of me starting to write, and I had to support a family, so I got into journalism. And there also, it is art in its own way. I became an editor. I used to write articles. So, I, uh, for me, art is apart from God is God Guru. Art is what keeps me, I think, sane. Yeah. Not life. Not life. What was your first experience with spirituality, per se? I don't know if you call it spirituality. I I wouldn't know if you call it spirituality. But I was put into a boarding school at the age of six. I was phenomenally mischievous, and in the end, my parents I think said, "Ship this guy." And I was in Billimore High School, Panchkani. And one day, these braces were in fashion. You know, a lot of my Friends in school used to wear braces. So I came home and I told my mom I want braces. So she said, "Hey, it's not some fashion statement." So I normally never asked for things. So I told her, "No, I really like it. I think it's nice and all." So somehow she took me to a dentist and that guy said, "Okay, I, if you want." So they bought me a pair of braces. And uh, after a few days, they were shipping me off to school again. So that was the first time my mother ever talked about money. She told me, uh, "They are damn expensive. Don't lose them." First time that money thing came into my life. So I went back to Bulimoriyas, and religiously, three days la- later, I had lost my brace. And I think the first time guilt came into my life was here. Okay. My mother has told me first time about money, and here I have lost it. So I remember kneeling down on the side of my bed, and putting my elbows on the bed, and I folded my hands and I said, "God, wherever you are, you know, help me to find the braces." Okay, and. Once you help me to find it, I'm going to pack it and give it to the matron, and I'll give it back to my mother. That keep it. And I get this message in the head that go into the dressing room. There's a mirror. The mirror was on a cabinet. So go into the dressing room, and below the cabinet is your brace. So I said, okay, thanks God. This, that, and all went. Search no brace. So again, came back and I said, "Kya, bas kya? You know, I don't have any braces." So the voice again said, calmly, okay, 
go again and search it is behind one of the pillars of the cabinet then i put my hand and it was there so that was my first experience of getting a message okay i must have been around six and a half then uh, around the age of 10 or so we were on table and playing football and in panjgani when it starts raining no those days in 2 3 minutes time you can't see anything fog comes in the water drops are heavy and imagine we are on table land and somebody kicked the ball and it came near me and as i started running after the ball the rain and the fog came and my whole attention was on the ball falling on the rocks you know the sound and then suddenly again i heard this voice which said stand still don't take a step forward and uh, for some reason i always listen to the voice you know i didn't have a question no nothing i thought it was just a natural thing everyone had it so i stood still i could hear my friends shouting hey ruspe ruspe where are you don't you know and then when the mist cleared i was one or two feet away from the precipice so if the ball had gone down i would have gone down too so i don't know if you call this spirituality but it's comforting to know that they've been there always <laughs> when you talk about they is this baba specifically uh, ma and baba yes so how does it work um because you're one of the fortunate few who is a channel of mm. sai baba does he ju- obviously nothing happens without the grace of a master but how does it work like uh, how how did it work after you started getting these voices what Asad, happened then asad i'm 55 now i've been channeling since i was 29 30 okay i ask this question to myself regularly why me so if you're waiting for some real great answer from me you're not getting it i don't know why he's chosen me certainly not for anything that i've done in in this lifetime the 100% not and i feel in no lifetime i could have done anything to deserve this kind of honor and privilege and i'm doing i'm not saying it out of humility or anything i'm just stating facts but i also know one thing that baba has in one of his 11 promises he has said you ask me a question i will answer you so i think anyone can be a channel i think anyone can be a channel but there must be some prerequisites right let's say um if an average person or an ordinary person wants to become a channel he has to be pure of mind body and intention right what are some of the prerequisites do you think i don't even think that is a prerequisite i've known great assholes who are mediums not good people but they yet get the energy how do i put it if you have done something in some lifetime it allows you an x number of years to maybe become a madhyam or become a catalyst or become a medium to the goddess god guru and you have that period now even if you don't use that period properly even if you start deceiving people fooling people cheating people till that period the energy will come through you remember i said there's a big difference between shuddhi and siddhi what comes through me on a very broad level you can say siddhi that need not make me shuddh okay so i don't think being a channel is a birthright of a few i don't believe that yes loving them praying to them keeping your mind in the now 
quiet, silent. <coughs> Meditating, these are good ways of enhancing the mediumship. But trust me, if you are destined to be a channel, you will be a channel. But it need not be that you will be a good human being. I agree with what you've said yeah. because in one of your books you've mentioned about the three gunas. There are there's um, sattva, raja, and tamas, yeah. and then there is something that is beyond the three gunas. Yeah. And just because something is sattva, that does not make it right. Yeah. So I agree with you. Yeah. But how does the relationship work? Um, do you get possessed when no. you hear the? No, I don't. Uh, I have gone into trance, but Baba told me once clearly that. If you become a trance medium and somebody were to call you at 12.30 in the night saying, my child is dying, help me, you will not be able to help because I will only be able to come through when you are in a trance, in a particular place, in front of the fire, at a particular time. So he said, let's not do trance. And uh, he said, just be in the moment, I will come through anytime. You don't worry, wherever you are, you could be in a cafe which is kind of true. I have done one of my most powerful channelings in the most odd places, sometimes very high. <laughs> okay, so I remember once one lady called me up, I had just begun channeling and one lady called me up. She was a channel too. And it was 10.30 on a Sunday night. I had already downed three large old monks. She called me up and said, you know, Rusbe Beta, my niece is missing. And uh, we don't know, she's had a fight at home and she's gone away. And uh, asked Baba. So I told her, Thai, I don't think I'm in a state to ask Baba. She said, why? I said, because I, I'm quite drunk. And then suddenly the voice from inside came, but I am not drunk. <laughs> and then Baba spoke through saying, tell her not to go to the police at twelve, uh, between 12 and 12.30 in the night. In two and a half hours, she will be there. Again I told her, I said, listen, I, I don't know whether I, my drunk voice is saying this. So. And she said, don't worry. And 12.15 uh, I got a call. She's back. That is a big lesson to me. And Baba only said the next day in the morning, okay, don't worry, just be in the moment. Whether you're drunk, whether you're angry, whether you're sleepy, whether you're in a cafe, or wherever. If you are centered and in the moment, I will come through you. And that's how he comes. <laughs> Has there been any time where you have asked Baba something and Baba said, you are not ready to know this, so I cannot, I'm not allowed to reveal this information to you? I don't ask Baba about myself. I don't. It's very difficult to know whether he is talking or my subconscious mind is talking because I'm entwined in it. Like my mother once had told me, Rusbe, you are like the best brain surgeon who requires brain surgery. <laughs> you can't perform it on yourself. So, uh, Baba has never told me I can't answer it. But many times he has told the person, Abhine. Okay? So, he's never told me, no, I cannot answer it. Yeah, there are many times he'll say, don't tell this to this man. He's told me something, but he said, don't tell him. That he has done many times. So I understand, means I have to keep it to myself. But, uh, I don't think he's ever told me, I cannot answer this. If he doesn't want to divulge, he'll tell me, Batman. So I understand. Now is not the time. And very strangely, maybe after three years, he might just tell me, Haan, wo kar do. And Then I'm scratching my head, Kya kar 
and then I'll say, oh, he had told me Baad mein, that Baad has come three years later. And their concept of soon is very dangerous. When they say soon, <laughs> it could take 15 years. Oh, what I meant to ask was, have you ever asked him something like related to the secrets of the universe or any question that you're curious about? Asad, I don't give a fuck about all this. As I grow older, the only thing I want to do is love him more and more and be worthy of him and not forget my Aukath, which is the dust under his feet. Okay? That's all of us. Yeah. That's all of us. So that's it. Uh, I really don't care a fuck how the cosmos is operating. What secrets are there? Because now I've come to a point that even Siddhi and all is quite useless. And it has to be surpassed. Even in the it's, Patanjali Sutras, they yeah. have clearly mentioned you can get Siddhis through Aushadi, you can get yeah. it through Tapas. Ravana got it. There were so many people yeah. who got it. But the objective is beyond. We yeah. need to transcend all yeah, this. Yeah. It's quite useless. It's you know, it's actually useless. The only thing the only thing of substance is Bhav. How much do you love your master, your goddess? I think that is the only thing that matters anymore. And are you being worthy of them? Though actually we can never be worthy of them. But are you at least on the path? <laughs> and uh, See, spreading the light as much as you can. But the important thing is not being extinguished by the light of Seva. Meher asked me some time back, do you regret anything? And I said, yeah, maybe. 25 years of channeling with mankind, I should have spent it serving the animals. Mm. Yeah, I do regret it. Like you have mentioned many times, humans are the scum of creation who have the potential for I believe, Godhood. Yeah. <laughs> we have the potential of Godhood, but we are kind of scum. No, but even when you talk about the cosmic hierarchy, mm. there are so many beings above us and yet our egos are so inflated. Yeah. Our lifespans are like a blink of an eye and yet, you know, we yeah. give so much importance to the things that we do on a daily yeah, basis. Yeah, yeah. We are a self-destructive species. So you've had the privilege of meeting so many, I wouldn't, gurus, masters, whatever you would define them. I would say advanced seekers. Advanced seekers. Okay, let's go there. Actually, I was going to ask you this much later. There are so many words thrown around. There's sages, mm. there's yogis, there's jnanis, and we all know there's so many yogas. There's karma yoga, mm. bhakti, yeah. jnana. We know that the destination is the same. Yeah. What is the destination? I don't know about their destination, Asad. You're asking me my destination? To love the Goddess God Guru more and more. But that's it. And uh, be able to give each moment one's very best and leave the rest joyously to the one. How does designations matter? who are sages, who are yogis, who are fakir, as if they are not operating from complete bhav to the one. I think they are just titles. And history has shown that however powerful the spiritual master may be, he is not beyond anger, he is not beyond ego, he is not beyond greed, he is not beyond lust. That's why, you know, Sai Baba of Shirdi, Ramakrishna Paramahansa. What shines through Sadhu Vas, uh, Dada Vaswani, Swamiji Naik, what shines through is their love for the One. Baba would go on saying, It's not me, it's the Fakir. Ramakrishna Paramahansa was completely like a child in front of Makali. Swamiji Naik would always say, No. It is Ma Mukambika who comes through. Don't thank me, thank her. I have done nothing. I am just a Madhyam. Dada Vaswani, you went into his presence and then in two minutes you forgot Dada Vaswani and only Sadhu Vaswani emerged. That was his, I think, greatest power. <laughs> if you call about power of a master, 
I think it was Sai uh, Dada Vaswani's greatest power that he just disappeared. You were just in the presence of Sadhu Vaswani, looking at Dada Vaswani. He never made you forget who the master was. What a phenomenal trait. I wouldn't even call it humility, you know, because in you, humility also there is an effort. This was just pure love. And that's why I say it's all about love. It's all about love. It's not about miracles. It's not about powers. It's not about anything. I think it's just about love. Because everything else will get you to the doorstep. Only love will make you enter. Now those who have done any research on you or read your books know what, where you stand on karma and where mm. it comes from. But where do you think we came from and why are we here in this human form? My interpretation? So the Creator, Muslims call Allah, Zoroastrians call Ahura. I call her Param Shakti, uh, Adi Shakti Param Kali. Okay? She was, is and will be always there, throbbing mass of energy, Shakti. And uh, from this Shakti come out sparks. And we are individual sparks. And when we come out, there is only free will. And as we start using a chota dimag, the karma starts rising, right? And then depends where you are. The very fact that Hindus do Namaste means I bow down to the one within you. is such a profound way of greeting someone that I bow down to the one in you. And I believe any living organism being is throbbing with that power, Shakti, Ahura, Allah, whatever you want to call it. Okay? And I believe we all have it. It's just dormant. And those who are on the path, kind of slowly with their love and their tapas start activating it. And hundreds of lifetimes later you've activated it completely and then you are a master. And then that's where the problems start. Because then you get sucked into your disciples and devotees. And sometimes I feel that becomes a hindrance to move on. You know. So it's all about love, Asad. It's all about love. That's why for me, you know, people like Mirabai, the must, the God intoxicated. I think they are on a far more stronger footing with the one than sages and yogis and Sufis and all that. Because they are intoxicated. I would love to be only in that state. You know, in that dance with the one, you are completely in Nasha. Like Rumi was, like Kabir was, like Sant Gyaneshwar. You know, all those beautiful people who, through art, I think art is one of the fastest ways you can reach the one. Especially, you know, singing. Especially singing. I don't think that much as writing and acting, but with the musical instrument, you know, or just singing your love, however fucking horrible your voice may be, just singing it with love. And I think that is one of the quickest ways. That's why you have Kavalis and Bhajans. 
and it's i think also a very innocent way of what are you doing in a kavali and a bhajan you're just praising them or you're seeking their love you know you know what i'm saying and i think that's yeah better late than never at least at the age of 55 i know this i'd like to digress a little bit here when you talk when you spoke about and i agree with what you said that in the beginning there was the creator and there was only free will uh, do you think there was according to the scriptures and according to the people that you've met and some of the books especially uh, bapu ji dashrat mm. bhai's patel's book the om of all things that you've written with mm. him he mentions that in the beginning there was just the creator mm. and then there were 108 souls and then we fell from amar lok and then we came to mrityu lok and of course the vedas have also described this in details asad it's their reality religions have not even made up the mind how is life after death just google what do ancient religions talk about life after death not one religion agreeing with the other they can't agree on such a simple point then everything is your perception and my perception i don't know what the reality is this is what i think i could be fucking really wrong <laughs> you know what i'm saying so go within you want to find the truth go within don't go to the scriptures the scriptures are somebody's reality may not be the universal reality like there's a famous quote that says the universe is under no obligation to make sense to you yeah i agree completely you know we got a quote i put it in the last marathon is there behind every zoroastrian prayer book uh if you believe in god no explanation is necessary if you don't believe in god no explanation is possible i think that says it that says it this reminds me buddh means intelligence yeah the one that doesn't have it we call buddhu mm. buddhi is the one who is intelligent yeah. but what is it that transcends all intelligence the buddha so that's what we need to do yeah. but in your wisdom and experience mm. and especially now um, you've had the privilege of meeting so many people mm. and you've done years decades of research into mm. this what do you think happens to us when we die especially in your book with conversations with dada you've discussed at length yeah. the astral plane and the causal plane and how there are spirits your ancestors waiting to receive mm-hmm. you what is your view on what happens to us after death first i would like to believe that if you truly love your god is god guru you have remembered your ancestors and honored them i would like to believe that when i drop this physical body when this body dies i would like to believe that the goddess and baba along with my ancestors and loved ones would be there to receive me okay i think we gravitate to a place which we have given most energy to during a particular lifetime okay so if i am an angry man i am going to gravitate to a place which is filled with anger till i don't understand you no know, i have to transcend then i have got a choice of come back or move depending of course on your spiritual level you need to have a particular spiritual level to be able to decide or have the power to say no i think i'll work my karma now from in the spirit plane and not go back if you have any earthly desires any earthly desires the laws of gravity is, is going to pull you down fast so it happens in the form of rebirth if you are detached from the earthly things the law of gravity is going to take a really long time to be able to pull you down if it does pull you down so i believe we gravitate towards what energy we have spent our life in 
and many times even in the spirit plane you can get caught up in all the paranormal stuff going on so even that is a hindrance to the real seeker okay i feel they are doing a lot of work upstairs i believe all creation that we see has first been discovered up and then transmuted even i think einstein said the same thing he said that yes i have done all this but i have not done all this there is something doing it right so i think they do a lot of research and and then you become guides and guardian angels to people here and there like i've had so many people who have passed away and they've come and said no we are taking care of children who are dying very young you know some people are saying that no we spend a lot of time with those who are about to die and are suffering so i think you once again gravitate towards what is there and if money greed lust ego is really predominant then the earth will pull you down so maybe in a blink of an eye you're back into somebody's body this brings me to the concept of time i think time within itself is cyclical or a paradox mm. right would you agree with me when i say that uh, i think time was created for mankind i don't think the, i don't think there is any time up there i think it moves differently yes. like einstein said uh time's relative so for what what us could be a 100 years could be a blink of an eye for it them is, on is. the other planes it has been written in the it scriptures is. yeah they say a uh, one year is one day S- six months is day and six months is night on top and then it keeps multiplying yeah exactly like that so you know how did a uh, really 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 far away ancestors live they didn't have time that stone is meant in half time and uh, they seem to have done pretty well for themselves so so, <laughs> so i i sometimes think time is something that human beings needed and they created is it i am i want to make a request to you like how in your book you made a request when you went to interview dada was uh, sadhu aswani yeah. when you went to the statue of the samadhi of dada yeah. aswani and like listen i know this man is really humble but i cannot write a book if yeah. this man is going to be humble in spite of all the books that you have written and you you being very humble about your knowledge here which is which is what i'm trying to extract here and i know you you're someone who believes in simplicity mm. you have said time and time again i don't care about kundalini yoga pranayama which lok and what is there i just care about love for yeah. everyone and everything and yeah. the love for the master but <laughs> there are a few questions that i'd like to ask you sure so um sure. it is widely believed and according to most scriptures that were in kali yuga yeah however there is only one book called the holy science in which sri yukteswar who is the guru of uh, parmansa yogananda and he wrote the book on the command of mahavatar baba ji Mm. He is the only one who says that we are not in the kali yuga we are in the dwapar yuga. So what do you what is your personal opinion and view on this? Are we in the kali yuga? Does it I know Rusbe Barucha does not care it yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. But yet I'm I'm still asking you. Uh, look around you yeah, Asad. If this is not fucking kali yuga then the descendants are fucked yeah, when kali yuga really comes. No this is kali yuga. just look at us yeah we are like animals but that has always been there us yeah yeah it It's has just that now no you know what asad the population ratio was different even in satyug there were assholes but by and large people were simple nice kind compassionate by and large i think now is got reverse you have few people who are kind innocent compassionate and most are i think kaliyug the other word for kaliyug is where your survival instinct has gone through the roof and everything is looked upon i me myself of course history has shown that mankind has been the scum since beginning 
and more people have died in the name of God than in the name of the devil. I think the devil is taking a long vacation. He is saying these guys are far beyond me. Right or wrong? So, I think we are in Kali Yuga, but we are at the tip of Kali Yuga. This is not really what Kali Yuga is. I have a feeling sometime down the line, when the gears really shift, that would be the Kali Yuga that we know about. We are not going to see it in our lifetime. Our children will not see it in their lifetime. But uh, could be we are in the no man land at the moment between two yugs. But we are more towards the Kali Yuga door. But this world is running because of those kind, compassionate, innocent beings. The countless poor people, all they are trying to do is keep their head above water and do it with dignity. The lady who catches the 7.30 Virar fast to church gate, cramped, then goes to office, works, then picks up vegetables, catches the, you know, back to Virar from church gate, cuts her vegetables, goes home, cooks dinner, teaches her children, entertains her husband and sleeps and does it with a smile, I think. I think till that is there, the real Kalyu cannot enter. The day this goes away, then I feel the real Kalyu will enter. But as I told you, Asad, each master has a different take on many things. Let's take Sai Baba and Mayar Baba. I love them so much. Sai Baba believes that if you are behaving like an animal, you will be born as an animal. And in the Sat Charitra, you have incidences where two people have been fighting, fighting and one becomes a frog and the other becomes a snake. But Mayar Baba doesn't believe in that. Mayar Baba says no. Once you reach the human species, you cannot go back. Now, what am I to believe? And I remember asking Baba and he said, No, you have to find your truth. You find your truth. Don't ask me about these questions. He said, I cannot say Meher is wrong. And Meher cannot say Sai is wrong. So in between these two great giants, the only way I am going to really, really understand this is by going within and finding my truth. So these are, I think, all terms here. You will have hundred different different masters saying this is Kaliyug, and you will have Sri Sri Yudhkeshwar Giri saying this is not Kaliyug. How does it matter? Are you walking the path or not? Kaliyug go, Satyug go, Icyug go, whatever. How does it matter? I think I understand your dilemma a little better now mm. because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that even the masters believed and said different things. Yes, I'm just telling you, Google, no, what each religion talks about life and no, death. No, not talking about Google. When you have direct access to a master, yes, he's yes, telling you yes, this. Yes, yes, yes. You know, Meher Baba, Avatar Meher Baba has written a lot about why reincarnation is not there. Sai Baba has often said reincarnation is there where you will be born as an animal. These are two great giants here. I don't know who's right, who's wrong. And I can't even marry or cut me here to analyze this. None of us. Yeah, so and the people that think they have yeah, are so just deluded. Mary so Baba said, Tum dun dun na. You find your reality. Yeah, it, this reminds me. Each scripture says something different about masters. For instance, just the other day I was reading about uh, Jainism and how they have Arihantas and Tirthankas. Even, so, I don't know, there were five perfect masters when Sai Baba yeah, came. Yeah. There was uh, uh, Tajuddin Baba, Tajuddin Baba, Baba, Baba Jan. Baba Jan Narayan Maharaj. So, 
in your view especially today but you like you mentioned and I'm and I'm quoting and I might be wrong you throw you throw a stone in the general direction of the world and you'll find either a real estate broker or you'll find a guru yes how do you identify what is real and what is not what are some of the key <laughs> is the guru coming from humility selflessness and innocence very important not whether the guru is performing miracles but because that is siddhi one who performs miracles is not a guru one who takes you out of darkness into light is a guru right so if a person asks is this person taking me away from darkness into light is this person taking everyone from darkness into light because i could be a damn rich man you will project yourself differently to me but is this man taking every or is this woman taking everyone from darkness into light i think then you can at least explore and another thing the masters have said is how ever immature your guru may be however unready your guru may be the moment you have taken him or her as your guru then he is like brahma vishnu and shiva okay and you will be surprised it is your bhav your faith your surrender your love that creates the miracles it's not the guru otherwise sai baba should create miracles for his millions and millions and millions and millions of followers no why only certain followers experience the miracle is because it is their bhav their joyous complete surrender baba and channeling often says shraddha itni honi chahiye ki guru ko hila de do we have that shraddha to shake mr sai baba of shirdi so na mano to kahan bhi khuda nahi hai mano to patthar mein bhi khuda hai and that patthar will start performing miracles but it's not that patthar it's your devotion it's your devotion valmiki the decoit became valmiki by chanting mara 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 instead of rama 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 but his mind was on rama na so that's why i tell you asad aukat nahi bhulni chahiye ek baar aukat bhul gaya na sarvanash i i i i can't remember the quote exactly but it's um once you i think it's from game of thrones if you once you put the crown on the head you can't put the dog on the leash i think once ahamkara takes over ahamkara hi ahamkari ko marega it's not it's not you will not be punished for your anger you will be punished by your anger asad the bhagavad gita says that we have got, we are made up of various elements right the yeah the pancha mahabhutas yeah yeah and then you are made up of two three other things and 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 your individuality the soul the atman that means right? yeah so once i asked baba that uh, how does one understand if a person has reached a particular level of spirituality and he told me when fame and dishonor mean the same thing to that person know that person has begun to walk the steps why because we may be able to drop everything asad eventually drop even eating food drinking water we pinch with ego nahi jata hai you know what i'm saying that i doesn't go that's why i'm trying to tell you that they could be maharishis but if the i has not gone we're just vessels it is the will of the divine that is acting through us yeah. we're just tools instruments yeah so if that i is not gone no you like everyone else right. only with a little more siddhi 
you're right the people who do tapas who have earned enough good karma let's say even if they become gods even indra he's not what we think he is because he's also worried about losing his kingdom see listen to me first of all i think we have kind of sullied lord indra's name if you read the ancient scriptures like vedas lord indra was one of the high lights of the vedas everything is about indra agni vayu jal agni bhumi i don't know in the 21st century lord indra has been given quite a strange uh, twist so i don't know but what i understand what you're trying to tell me ke okay, it does not matter whether you are a great sage or you are even god remember there's a difference between the creator and god, god yeah. okay even if you are god you could yet be subtly ruled by ankar that means you you not understood the game but also i said priorities are different na if lord indra's priority is to maintain his godhood then he will do everything to maintain that godhood if your priority is to drop all the baggages and keep moving then you will do it it's your priority as a how do you distinguish whether something is predestined karma or free will for instance okay let me elaborate on what i'm trying to ask you here we all know the concept of karma when buddha was asked what is karma like dada he said don't get into it when your house is on fire you try to get out of the house you don't sit and question what it is and it's too complex rightly so yeah. but i'm sure you must have had this dilemma at some point where you are you have faced a difficult situation or a person you have wondered if i retaliate or if i take an x step is this karm will this come under karm or will this come under free will how do you you know have you ever asked baba say i'll tell you what there are many things that have happened in my life which i thought were my free will which resulted in disaster and uh, one day i met a sage and he told me this happened in your life this happened in your life this happened yes 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 he is saying kyun bahut ahankar aa gaya hai kya tujhe kya lagta hai tune kiya is no ye to hona hi tha what he was trying to tell me is by even accusing myself that it is my free will that mm-hmm. created all this he is trying to say what you got such a big ego you think your free will can do this no it was part of the karmic plan right very difficult as said because you don't know where you are in the balance of karma and free will the more spiritual you are greater the free will you have that is why as said if you really reached a spiritual height and you fuck up the fall is horrible because your master says boss <laughs> you had no trappings of circumstances and karma this is you right so it is very difficult to know so what i according to me now is if something goes beyond me after even putting all the effort then the only consolation i can give myself is maybe it was predestined right if i have to fight a battle and if ever i feel the need to be aggressive and if i get aggressive whether i am right or wrong i am creating karma yes what i can do is i can project anger you've mentioned this yes shallow anger and deep yes, anger yes yes 
Sai Baba of Shirdi and the masters projected anger. They would be thrashing a person, suddenly somebody else would come, how are you, son? Everything is fine, be good, this and then, then they again start thrashing. That is projection. But if you are consumed by anger, you will start screaming at this person also. Abhi nahi, chale jau. Right? So, if dharma dictates aggression, projected, yes. But be each moment in control. And God help you if you hurt a kind, innocent, compassionate being. And that can only happen if you are in complete control of yourself. Then you will know how to behave. Even if you are fighting five people, with each person you will have a different approach in fight. Depending on that person's involvement in the thing, right? That can only come when you are projecting anger. My philosophy after 55 years is give each moment your best and, leave the rest. and joyously leave the rest to the wisdom of your Goddess God Guru. I really think that has kind of lightened my shoulders. I am taking responsibility of all that I can do in the moment. Beyond that, I have cut myself off from the responsibility. Tu hi dene wala or tu hi lene wala. Why should I get into that equation? Paramahansa Yoganda says, no, Asad, God is simple, everything else is complex. I really, I read that book when I was 17. That's one sentence I've taken and used it through my life. And then Nautha Mehr Baba says, God is all merciful, but the path to God is merciless. Another statement which I have taken with me. And then my Baba says, Sai, Shraddha or Saburi. And the really me real meanings of Shraddha and Saburi. So, I think these three principles are good enough to live by. You know, I sometimes, I try to pick one thing from a master. Like my Prophet Zarathustra says, walk in the world with peace in your heart and a club behind your back. Which means what? Be ready. Be ready. Be peaceful but be, be ready. very peaceful but if the fucker is not going to understand then get the club out. Yeah, there is a Japanese saying, it is better to be a, a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Yes, yes. So, this is war, Asad. We are, the Kurukshetra is in us, the Ramayana is in us, everything is in us. We are at war. The problem is, 90% or 95% of people really don't know which side they are fighting for. Very often, morning they are on the left side, evening they are on the right side. But that's the mind, right? That's the it. human mind, that's it, yeah. that's it, it can be controlled. 100%. But that's who wants to control it? That's too much thing. effort, too much effort, too much effort. That's what yoga and the Patanjali Sutras are all about. The mind is merciless. It's going to drag you every day in a hundred different yeah. directions. Get it under control. Yeah. No, I either think you should just be in the moment. Forget the mind, forget the control, Asad. Forget it. Because there also there is your participation. You want to be free from the mind, then get into the moment. That is the savior. The goddesses, Param Shakti flows there, inside. You know, because even trying to control the mind, the mind already has control over you. Because you are putting so much effort, no? <laughs> so, mind already is controlling you, Asad. The only way is to drop it. By dropping it is, you are holding on to the present moment. You have not even dropped it, you have just held on to the present moment. And that is the only way forward. That's the only way forward. I know people who tell me, why didn't you do a five-day workshop on breathing, meditation? And I tell them, boss, 
माई एंटायर लेंथ ऑफ द वर्कशॉप विल बी सेवेंटीन मिनट्स उसके बाद चार दिन क्या करना है वो बोल दो नाउ वी एव मेड धंधा ऑफ एवरीथिंग एवरीथिंग इज अ ट्रांजेक्शन तीन तीन दिन की मेडिटेशन वर्कशॉप और तीन तीन दिन के ब्रीदिंग वॉट इज गोइंग टू है After no. that, before that. No, no, it's wow. Kita diya, fifty-five thousand, one and a half lakh. अरे बेंचुड गरीब को दे दो ना. और कोई भी मेरा YouTube वीडियो देख लो, breathing और meditation. पंद्रह मिनट में पता चल जाएगा. अभी practice करो ना. लेकिन you don't have the fucking discipline to practice ना. You can do the exact same thing with just yourself in a room, but no. That's it. Yeah. That's it. What is meditation? Yeah. Just become one with your breath. Bus. So I met this friends' parents had come to meet me, and they've been meditating for over forty-five years. I said, "How do you meditate? Take a deep breath in, six counts, hold. Before you take your six counts, hold six counts and eight counts and six counts and eight counts, and then focus on your muladhara." Uh, I said, "Time good." I said, then when do you start meditating? But and they said, no, there's a meditation. I said, no, 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 no. When do you start meditating? When does oneness come in? You cannot do meditation. You can only be in meditation. Yeah. And then I tell people, no, कुछ नहीं करना है. Just focus on your breath. If a thought comes to you, don't fight it. Don't encourage it. Come back to your breath. I'm sure they must be going out. I think Chutia has. Two minutes me meditation सिखा दिया. But if I give a fancy name to my meditation, or three days' ka venture workshop karaun, aenge log, pacha sazar deke aenge. Baad mein bolenge, wow, 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 kya aadmi hai. And then four days later, they'll stop doing everything I've told them. So, ठीक है. You gravitate towards your own. The laws of magnetism comes in. No, no. Good. Yeah. What is grace? I had this question with Dada Vaswani, and uh, I said, if someone is being graced by the God is God Guru, which goes beyond their karma, then is partiality. Why shouldn't everyone have the privilege and honor of grace, right? And he told me it was be grace is grace. I didn't understand him. Hmm. Six years down the line, I have understood. Yeah, grace is grace. We have really no idea why it comes on certain people and not on certain people. Maybe let's say. Fifteen lifetimes later, I'm on a very high place spiritually. I'm just giving you an example, and uh, Mayer is going through something. She's obviously in another lifetime. Fifteen lifetimes. I think my love will overlook all her karma. I think maybe that is grace, where maybe in many lifetimes I have been so much in love with the one that the one hasn't forgotten, and maybe when I'm going through a particular time, the one says, "No, it's my child." Right? So I think that is grace with the goddess, Adi Shakti Param Kali. There's no karma bharma, no. kuch bhi nahi. Then, shod, kar do, bas ho gaya. I am not interested in what has happened, why has happened, and what is going to happen. I don't want my child to suffer. Period. Everyone follows suit. Okay, ho jaye. So the guru is going to give an exception to you in really exceptional cases, and then in all probability will cut your karma 
1000 kilos into 25 lifetimes and then you will come 25 lifetimes to experience it or the guru says i will take it on and then the guru has to go through it but with the creator call allah aura param kali wo kuch nahi pata yeah my college pass period and the teacher said no no sir pass okay i don't want to know you <laughs> you are getting it but that power even the guru doesn't have that power even the guru doesn't have because then done it for me what about you then wo thoda impartiality hota hai but because param kali aura allah they are just energy it doesn't matter to them they don't have a concept of partiality that's how it comes through grace and they've got a phenomenal memory phenomenal memory so do i yet don't think is fair even i don't think grace is fair okay because i feel nahi yaar each one should have the same law but when dada explained me i didn't agree with him but maybe life has taught me that now there is grace what is the most memorable or fantastic spiritual or supernatural occurrence or experience you've ever had in your life once in a while i get this great wave of longing to be with the one and uh, it fills me up it fills me up it brings tears to the eyes i think that is the greatest spiritual experience i've had not the channeling not the miracles that have come through in channeling not even sometimes the glimpses you get of the goddess god guru sometimes you know i think with her grace with baba's grace they fill me up and i can experience maybe oneness fleeting or just that deep longing to be with them which is so agonizingly exhilarating okay <laughs> yeah i believe that this is the only the second time that i've met you yeah but in the little that i have inferred about who you are so far the only time that i have seen your eyes sparkle mm. and like how you said dada has a child like mm. smile mm. that is when we talk about meher or when you when i have seen you looking at meher or interacting with her mm. i think if it wasn't for this one earthly responsibility or attachment you would have been long gone right long long gone <laughs> yeah she is the dori that is keeping me back theek hai it's okay it's okay